now the green blade riseth from the buried grain. We that in the dark earth many days has lain, love lives again, who with the dead has been. Love has come again like wheat that springeth green.
to Peace Tree. If you're new here, we have a gift we'd like to give for you to take home. It's our famous Church Can Happen Anywhere t-shirts. Is the, I have to ask. I don't think this is the right slide. <laughs> Just keep going. Keep going. All right. <laughs> anyway, so if you would like, uh, thanks to our partnership with Give Threads, you can proudly wear it knowing you provided a school uniform to a child in Memphis. Feel free to stop by the t-shirt table in the lobby after worship concludes. And a quick hello to those who are watching online. Uh, good news about Lisa Lopez. She's currently out of the hospital and recovering at the Homewood Suites. Yeah, class for that. She is staying close to the Sarah Cannon Center for regular checkups on her progress, but that is good news. Also, a happy birthday to Gary Dodson, who's watching online right now. Today is his 60th birthday, and we hope that you're having a blessed day celebrating with your family. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Let's stand and sing our first hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today. Keep going. Christ our Lord. Christ the Lord is risen today. Ah, hallelujah. Let now all creation say.
hallelujahs. welcome you to Peace Tree. We are so glad that you're with us in person and online. If you're worshiping on Facebook Live, be sure to like the video, say hello in the chat, and let us know where you're joining us from this morning. We'd also like for everyone to take out your phones and check in on Facebook. Thanks to our partnership with a different charity each quarter, we're able to make a donation for each Facebook check-in at Peace Tree, so please get out your phones. And since it's the start of the new quarter, we have got a new nonprofit that we'd like to tell you about. But first, if you'd like to check in, all you have to do is open up the Facebook app on your phone, click on the phrase, what's on your mind, and then choose check in. Type Peace Tree UMC in the search bar and update your status with a picture or by tagging your friends before posting. For the months of April, May, and June, we'll be supporting the work of Build On by uniting people through service and education. Build On is creating a more just and equitable world. They partner with some of the world's economically poorest count countries to build schools, enroll previously out-of-school children, and support adult learners throughout their adult literacy program. Every Facebook check-in and review at Peace Tree this month will provide one hour of education to illiterate adults living in Senegal. So be sure to use the hashtag, hashtag education for all, so that others can learn more about this quarter's nonprofit partner. Thank you for checking in. Our pastor's Bible study this week recently wrapped up their study of Adam Hamilton's creed, What Christians Believe and Why. And now they're gearing up for their next book, Signs and Wonders, A Beginner's Guide to the Miracles of Jesus by Amy Jill Levine. If you wanted to dive deeper into miracles where thousands were fed, individuals who are blind can suddenly see, or how it is that Jesus could walk on water or calm a storm, then this study is for you. Led by Dr. Durbin, this group meets in the conference room on Thursdays at 10.30 a.m. If you need a copy of the book or you'd like to learn more about our pastor's Bible study, then you can email us at office at peacetree.church. You can RSVP to this week's gathering on Facebook and use the event to invite a friend. Signs and Wonders kicks off this Thursday and runs through May 18th. 
And then also mark your calendars for June 26th through the 30th, which is where we'll be hosting our first day shore camp at Peace Tree. Our friends from Lakeshore Camp and Retreat Center bring a full week day camp experience to us, complete with tie-dye projects, archery, gaga ball, silly games, dances, and meaningful lessons about Jesus and his love. Church members will get 20% off the $150 fee for your first child, and everyone gets 10% off for each additional sibling that signs up. Dayshore is for children ages 5 through 12, and teenagers are able to serve as volunteer counselors if they're interested in attending. The camp will run from 8 a.m. until 5.30 each day and includes lunch and an afternoon snack for all participants. You can email our children's minister at karen at peacetree.church for more info about our June 26th through the 30th Day Shore Camp. Or stop by the kids' table in the lobby and pick up a registration form. Thank you again for worshiping with us in person and online. And let's stand for our next song, Agnus Day. This time, children in kindergarten through fifth grade are invited to follow Miss Karen, Miss Abby, and our other volunteers to Peace Tree Kids. Parents, if you did not get a chance to sign in your children before worship this morning, we ask that you walk with them to room seven. You'll be able to pick up your children from room seven after worship concludes today. We thank you so much. Uh, while they're heading out, I'll say a quick hello to a few folks that I can see uh, online. A happy Easter and a hello to 
uh, Eileen Wiley, to Bonnie Gay, to Jamie and Celeste Giannis, to uh, Dina and Gary Dodson and their family, to Charlotte Ernesti, uh, to Janet Autry, Joe Travis, Joe and Lisa Lopez. Uh, I feel like I saw a few more uh, here. Let me see. Where are they? Where are they? Right here. Uh, yeah. No, that's it. That's who, that's who I saw. Uh, so, oh, oh, no. Chad Crisco, Francis Green, Nathan Rose, uh, Ruth Walters. We are so glad that y'all are with us online right now. And uh, we count you as being here with us, even though uh, we're not here together in person. We know that uh, God's spirit connects us all. And so we, uh, we welcome you online and we say hello to you and we wish you a happy Easter. And, uh, and a thanks to everybody uh, uh, who's here in the, the building uh, to, to be with us uh, today, to, to gather together. Uh, we're going to take a moment right now to offer our gifts back to God. Our ushers are walking around with the offering plates. But if you'd like to make a gift using your cell phone, then please visit peacetree.church slash give. You can click on the button that takes you to the Blackbaud giving page. And uh, now you can also donate to Peace Tree using PayPal uh, or Venmo by searching for Peace Tree UMC if you have PayPal or Venmo. If you're writing a check this morning, please make it out to Peace Tree. And if you're watching uh, online from home right now, you'd like to mail in your tithes and offerings, then please send your gifts to 9315 East Shelby Drive, Carrieville, Tennessee, 38017. Uh, thank you all so much for your generosity and for supporting our missions here at Peace Tree. Uh, I should say, uh, just really quickly, I am Pastor Chris. I'm the lead pastor here at Peace Tree. Um, my thanks to, uh, to Abby for giving our announcements this morning. If you missed uh, meeting Abby last week, uh, she is our youth ministry intern who's going to be serving from now until July 31st. Uh, so if you are a middle school or high school age student or you have children or grandchildren that are middle school or high school, uh, then Abby's the person that you want to see after worship today, uh, getting some plans underway right now for a lot of different things happening here at our church and some fun activities for the summer. So uh, be sure to say hello to Abby. She'll be in uh, room seven hanging out with the, the children today, uh, but she is getting our youth program started up this summer. And so we're so excited for that. Uh, this past October, a group from our church joined with individuals from four other congregations to form the Rio Bravo uh, missions team. And the team members came from California, from Binghampton, from Georgia, uh, from Bahalia, and from Collierville. And then over the course of a week, we completed several major home improvements at the Rio Bravo Children's Home. We, we served in one of the boys' homes that week. Uh, but we also had a team that installed some much-needed soffits on a, a roof for a church building located in Reynosa, Mexico, on the outskirts of town. Now, each night, the team treated the children living at Rio Bravo to board games, to an American cookout with, uh, with burgers and chips, uh, to uh, a movie night, to an outing at Peter Piper Pizza, which is uh, sort of like a Chuck E. Cheese. We had fun arts and crafts projects, and we just had a, a great time spending time with those children. The dates for this year's mission trip have been set for October 7th through the 13th during Carnival School school's fall break. If you'd like to learn more about the Rio Bravo Children's Home and how you can support the team or join this year's missions team, then please make plans to attend our interest meeting that's going to be held on April the 30th. It's going to be in our hospitality room. If you came in through the main entrance, uh, it's the room with the yellow chairs. Uh, that's going to be at 430 on April the 30th. We're, you can invite your friends using our Facebook event that we have live right now on our Facebook page. And I hope to see many of you there. I'm going to be going on this year's team. I know I talked to Dr. Durbin, and right now we're planning on Dr. Durbin joining this year's team as well. The last time I counted, I think there was, there was somewhere between 12 and 15 members of our congregation that were interested in going. So we'd love to add to our numbers. We'd love to be able to affect uh, more lives and get uh, some, some really good projects done this year at Rio Bravo. But at this time, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and join me in prayer. Mighty God of resurrection, and redemption, we offer our gifts alongside our alleluias. We long for Easter to fill us and soak into our bones like those who were confronted in a garden by angels announcing, he is not here, he is risen. So may we run from here and not walk because we in every corner of the world so desperately need to hear the news the angels share. Before we speak a word, May others see in our faces that the world has forever been changed. You win, God, and death loses. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. 
So, uh, a few more things I want to be sure that you know about before I read our scripture lesson today. I'd like to tell you about some upcoming Sundays that are going to be taking place here at Peace Tree. First is our Creation Care Sunday on April the 23rd. This is going to be a communion Sunday. We're going to hear a word from Reverend Gary Lawson, the Executive Director at Lakeshore Camp and Retreat Center located in Eva, Tennessee. The day before Creation Care Sunday, though, is going to be the second annual Lakeshore Benefit Concert featuring Sandy Feet. And this year's concert is also going to include uh, what many consider a, a staple of going to summer camp, and that is is a talent show. So we're going to have camp counselors come to Peace Tree. They're going to be on hand in the gym to provide a preview of our Day Shore Day Camp, that day camp uh, that you heard about for uh, the children ages 5 to 12. So if you want to come and get a sneak peek at what uh, Day Shore is going to be like, then come to the benefit concert. The doors are going to open at 5. The concert will begin at 5.30. We know it's uh, around dinner time. So the camp canteen is also coming. Uh, to, to, to Peace Tree. It's going to be in the kitchen with some of your favorite camp snacks and treats. And more info can be found on our Facebook events page. The Lakeshore Benefit Concert is free to attend. So we invite you uh, we, to invite your friends. We ask that you invite your friends. And uh, the last thing I want to be sure that you know about, our middle school students have been exploring their faith during this semester's confirmation class. They worshiped with the congregations at Temple Israel and the Catholic Church of the Incarnation. They've gone to two separate weekend retreats at Lakeshore, where they learn what it means to be Christian and what it means to be a Methodist. And next week, they'll have the opportunity to profess their faith publicly and to confirm their vows that their parents gave at their baptism. So we hope that you'll come back next week. Join us on the 16th for our second ever Confirmation Sunday as we support our young people and welcome them as members, as full members, into the Peace Tree Congregation. And once again, will you bow your heads for a word of prayer? Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and the meditations of each of our hearts and minds be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Friends, have you ever heard the story of Nicholas Winton? Nicholas Winton. Does that name ring a bell for anybody? He's not an American. So don't expect you to know through the, you know, the, the passage of time who Nicholas Winton would be. But I got to tell you, uh, I've heard his story here recently, and I, and I really can't stop thinking about it. And I feel like it connects with our passage today that comes from Colossians. So I'm going to read this for, for you. You can follow along with the words on the screen, and then we're going to jump into the story of Nicholas Winton. Here is Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. So, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, Nicholas Winton. I can't stop thinking about his story. Nicholas Winton was a stockbroker living in London. And as Adolf Hitler was rising to power. Winton was concerned about the German persecution of Jews. He had heard about refugee camps that had been set up in Czechoslovakia. And so, he decided he was going to do something. He took a two-week vacation. He traveled to Prague in order to see for himself what was taking place there. And I should also mention that at this point in his life, Nicholas Winton was only 29 years old. He had no connections to the government. He had uh, no connections to the military. He was just a stockbroker from London who felt like something needed to be done in order to help these people and especially these children. 
So he takes a two-week vacation. He goes to Prague in order to see for himself. And, at, and, and what he discovers there is that there were just thousands and thousands of people living in these awful conditions. And he started meeting families. And he discovered hundreds and hundreds of families who wanted to get their children to safety. So he started collecting the names and the pictures of children whose parents had come to Nicholas, wanting him to find families to adopt their children back in his home country of Britain. He would stay up late hours, sometimes to two o'clock in the morning, and he'd wake up early the next day in order to get back out there to meet individuals and to try to help as many as he could. And at the end of his two-week vacation, he returned home to London and he presented himself to the British government as the chairman of a children's section for an established refugee organization. The only thing is that there was no such children's section. But he convinced the government officials that that he was an official, that he was a representative of this refugee uh, organization because he had some letterhead. And he had a printing press. So he took the letterhead and he just put underneath uh, the main title, Children's Section. I don't know if any of you are, are fans of The Office, but this reminds me of when Michael Scott stole letterhead from Dunder Mifflin and then he put the Michael Scott paper company just right over top of it pretending to be something that he wasn't. Well, Nicholas went and did it. He did it for, uh, for better reasons than say Michael Scott. He took this letterhead and he convinced the British government that they needed to take these children in. And so he cleared a major hurdle there but then this was all contingent about, upon him finding families who would receive these children. So they circulated the pictures of the children. They were able to find individuals who would receive them to rescue these Czech children before war broke out. And, and his team, his team was composed of a couple of volunteers but perhaps the most important team member to, to any family, his mama. His mom was part of the team. And they worked in an office each night because by day he kept his job as a stockbroker in London. And they found a way to find families for these children. Over the spring and the summer of 1939, there were seven different trains that left from Prague and traveled through the heart of Nazi Germany in order to go west to Holland, where they then took a ferry to England. And when all was said and done, Nicholas had helped save 669 children from an almost certain death. He has been dubbed by the British press in recent years as the British Schindler. 669 children saved from a certain death. And what, what seems to be the most amazing act of humility, Nicholas Winton did not tell anybody how he and his mother and these volunteers from London had organized the transfer of these 669 children from Czechoslovakia to England. He sought no praise, no recognition, and no honors. It wasn't until 50 years later, as Winton's wife was up in the attic going through some things, that she happened to discover a book in a box that had not been touched. A book and a ledger containing the names of every child and adoptive family. It was found there in the attic. And when she realized what she had held in her hands, she decided to call the BBC to tell them about what her husband had done and had kept to himself in humility, not seeking praise, not seeking any fanfare. 
And so the BBC tracked down some of these children. And then a program was held on television called uh, That's Life. And Winton was invited to come sit in the crowd in 1988. And that's where the hosts of the show finally told his story, finally revealing to the world the humanitarian efforts and the aid that Sir Nicholas Winton had provided. And what came as an even bigger surprise was that dozens and dozens of children who had been saved by Nicholas Winton were sitting around him in the audience. They were all grown up, all thanks to the sacrifice and the ingenuity and the concern of a 29-year-old stockbroker from London. All of those lives were saved. And as I consider Sir Nicholas Winton's story, because he was knighted eventually by the queen, as I consider the sacrifice that he made, the lives that were changed and the joy of reunion realized years and years after his initial act of salvation, I cannot help but think about the Easter story. We are here today celebrating a Jewish man who risked everything for his friends, for their children, and for their children's children. He sacrificed his own life so that generations would follow him and those people would not have to fear death. They wouldn't have to wonder if God was real or if love was real, but he would make it unmistakably certain in one defining act that took away all of our mistakes and all of our sins and all of our faults and all of our shortcomings. And he put us right with God and right with each other. Jesus lived a life in such a way that provided an example for each of us for what it means to be authentically human. Showing us how to stay right and how to stay pure and spotless, but also forgiving us for whenever we mess up. Easter is a day when we celebrate Jesus' most important miracle. Defeating death itself. Not only did he overcome the grave, but he continued living on earth in a new but familiar way, inspiring his disciples to continue carrying out his mission. That mission that he came to humankind with, revealing God's love to them, showing them that the miracle did not have to end on Easter and the miracle did not have to end with Jesus. He has made that available to each of us so that we might experience the miracle of eternal life, so that we might realize the joy of heavenly reunions with loved ones spanning back through the generations, so that we might live in God's house and worship God along with the saints and spend eternity as God's people in the kingdom of heaven. So what are we to do with the miracle of Easter today? What are we to do with this? How can we celebrate Easter as a resurrection people? As children who have been rescued by Christ's ultimate miracle. I turn our attention back to Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 through 4. And I believe uh, the message paraphrase puts it in a language that we can hear. So if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. Your old life is dead. Your new life, which is your real life, even though it's invisible to spectators, your new life is with Christ in God. He is your life. 
When Christ, your real life, remember, shows up again on this earth, you will show up too. The real you. The glorious you. Meanwhile, be content with obscurity like Christ. If you're serious about it, then act like it. I love that way of putting it. To pursue the things of heaven. To consider what Nicholas Winton did. Who lived in obscurity. Who humbled himself. Nicholas could have sat idly by. But instead he chose to save a life. We can save lives too. We can. You've heard the good news of Easter this morning. You know that Jesus overcame death. You now know Jesus offers us a gift that can never be earned. But friends, don't hold on to that. Don't lock it away so that nobody else could find it. This is a gift that's meant to be shared. Not with clenched fists, but with open hands. And I would bet that you know someone right now who is yearning for community, who desires to be loved, to be accepted, someone who wants growth and wants to serve and wants to work for peace. You might even be able to picture that person in your head right now. It might be a family member. It might be somebody sitting on the row with you. It might be somebody who's watching this right now from home. We all know somebody who's in need of Christ's love. I'd encourage you to channel the courage of Sir Nicholas Winton to help save their life by introducing them to Christ, by opening their eyes and helping them realize that God has been with them all along from the moment they took their first breath to this very day. When asked by a reporter how he accomplished what he did in Czechoslovakia, Winton shared his life's motto if something's not impossible, there must be a way of doing it. Can y'all repeat that after me? If something's not impossible, something's not impossible. There, must there must be a way of doing it. If something's not impossible, if something's not impossible there must be a way of doing it. With Christ, nothing is impossible. Or if we want to put it into the positive, with Christ, all things are possible. The healing that you desire for yourself or for a friend, that's possible. The chance to care for your loved ones and to provide for your family, it's possible. That skill or that talent that you've been hiding or keeping to yourself, or maybe you're ashamed of it, you can use that for God's glory. You can be proud of it. It's possible. If something's not impossible, there must be a way of doing it. If you were to count up all of the children who were born to the 669 kids saved by Nicholas Winton. If you were to count up their children and then the grandchildren and then the great-grandchildren, you would have over 15,000 people. 15,000. 15,000 lives that exist that are here, that have lived on this earth, all thanks to the courage of one man. Now consider how many lives and how many souls have been saved 
because of the courage of this man, because of the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then ask how many more can be saved when we don't hold on to the gift with clenched fists, but we present it to others with open arms. That gift of salvation that was offered to us through Jesus Christ. How will you share that gift? How will you use your talents to impact the lives of others? How will you introduce others to Jesus and open their eyes? And how will you celebrate the miracle of Easter? Whatever you do, my friends, may you live your life in Christ. May you pursue the things of heaven. And may you remember the words of Sir Nicholas Winton. If something's not impossible, there must be a way of doing it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, during the season of Lent, we dive deeper into the historic affirmation of faith that we know as the Apostles' Creed and as the band makes their way back here to the stage. I'm going to invite you to stand as you're able. We're going to join our voices together. Since it's Easter and since it's great to see so many friends and neighbors, before we join our voices together, I'm going to invite you to turn and I greet your neighbor with a word of peace. Uh, peace of Christ be with you. one true church apostolic and universal whose holy faith let us now declare I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified dead and buried the third day he rose from the dead he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, we have one more song that we're going to sing on this Easter morning. It's uh, one that, uh, perhaps that you know uh, from the movies, from Caleb, uh, from the radio. And so we're going to invite you to join your voices as we sing God's Not Dead. Uh, and let's give it our all. Let's continue to seek the things of heaven. And let's uh, live as a resurrection people now. Let hope arise. 
and make the darkness hide. My faith is dead, I need a resurrection somehow. Now I'm lost in your freedom. And this world invite you to take the hand of a neighbor who's uh, close to you. Maybe they're across the aisle. Maybe they're in front of you, behind you, a hand on the shoulder, uh, holding their hand. And as we uh, acknowledge our connectedness as uh, neighbors, as a community, as children of God who have been rescued by the love of Jesus Christ, uh, I encourage you to remember the words of Sir Nicholas Winton. If, if it's not impossible, then surely something can be done. Friends, uh, go forth from this place as a resurrected people. Seek the things of heaven and not of this earth. And may you look for ways to share your gifts and to share Christ's love with all that you meet. Go in peace. Amen. Because it's got the jam.